computer. Oh, we're on the air. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, just going to go through your uh, biofield analysis summary report. There's two numbered lists. The first list is the sources of stress. So these are the causes of stress where symptoms are associated with the effects of stress. And the two can be the same in some cases, or they can be at opposite ends of the body. And in, in conventional medicine, you know, we notice the symptoms as a patient and a doctor responds to the symptoms or even what we measure in the body a sim can be a symptom, like high blood pressure could be a symptom of toxic blood and the kidneys having stress, but they don't treat it with treating the cause, which would be to clean the kidneys or clean the blood. They stop the heart and the nervous system from being able to make the heart work hard enough to make the blood pressure high to try to filter the toxic blood. Yeah, so so uh, the, the first, each stress uh, layer will then be balanced by one or sometimes two different remedies, depending on what it takes to pick the lock, to get the body to say, oh, that, that's not a stress. I have what I need to deal with that. It doesn't mean the healing is done. It means the healing is now happening. It's not like looking for the, the, the stuff from nature that we'd normally, well, like animals that are sick will eat different herbs than they normally do. And that is the herbs, those are the herbs that heal them because our body responds to frequencies, to information, to signals. Okay, so the, the first one is ED4 nerve driver, which represents the epigenetics of healthy nerve cell function. So what we're doing with that, what it's saying is it's, it's the stress and it's the remedy. So it's, it's reactivating the, the biofield, the energy field for the nerve cells to tell them how to turn on the healthy genes, the genes of healthy function. So that's a nice thing when we're concerned about how certain nerve cells are functioning. And it's great that that's at the first level of stress because that's the most surface, most superficial, most recent stress generally. And typically the, these uh, uh, are, they're called infoceuticals, information medicine. Usually the information medicine is very deeper because that's the epigenetics that's in the, in the nucleus of the cell. So we've got to get through all the tissue to get there. So you've been doing some good work and it shows. The second, yeah, the second, second layer is the liver, which is very strongly associated with the eye or in oriental medicine, when, when somebody says, oh, I got my eye, uh, the acupuncture says, hmm, your liver, <laughs> right? Because the five elements, the wood element, the, the, the liver meridian literally go, travels right up the optic nerve to the retina, to the eye. Uh, and, and, and that, optic nerve carries two thirds of all the electrical current that comes into the brain. So it's a very powerful nerve liver battery. It's actually the, the strongest battery in the body at an organ and system level is between the eye brain. The eye is like the photovoltaic cell, the solar collector, sending electricity to charge up the brain as a negative charge. And the liver is processing toxins and nutrients and everything from the whole gut, filtering all the blood from the gut to clean it before it goes to the rest of the body. So it's processing a lot of positive ions, a lot of acidity, getting getting rid of that. Uh, <clears throat> so the other things that balanced on that layer were the uh, kidney and the phase two affecting kidney and the conduct conjunctiva. Okay, so so that Ray's telling me from the database, there's what doesn't show on your summary report is uh, this is layer one, layer two. two. So it balanced with liver support, which is a combination of mostly herbs, some nutrients that, that help liver function. Uh, and that, that's the, be the best time to take that is at dinner because the liver, we know from the Chinese organ clock, the liver meridian is most active from one to three in the morning. So dinner time is gonna have that active in your system while the liver is most active at night. Uh, and okay. the other things that, that we noted that balanced with the liver support, besides the liver itself as an organ, a stressed organ, was the kidneys. Well, the liver cleans the blood from the gut, which is the most toxic part of our body. So we're cleaning that out. And whatever gets through the liver has to get filtered out by the kidneys. So if we clean up the gut or clean up the liver and the blood going through the liver, that helps the kidneys. In this case, that's all the kidneys needed was, thank you very much liver for like you know, not passing along more work to me because the kidneys are sensitive. <laughs> and the kidneys in oriental medicine govern the nervous system. So the retina, the eyes, the brain, 
um, the nerves, which was that first layer, we're dealing with the epigenetics of the nerves that ties into the water element in the kidneys that balanced on that second layer when we balanced the liver. It balanced uh, the terrain, the biophysical terrain, which I call phase two terrain in this case, which is where we see more rapid aging, where we see uh, enzyme blockages and the possibility for bacterial or parasitic activity because there's our, if our enzymes aren't breaking things down, we're leaving food on the table for somebody else. Okay, that was basically the one. Yeah, the yeah. thing. I feel like I've aged a little, like suddenly. Yeah, yeah. We call it rapid aging when you're in phase two terrain. That's what's showing up, and again, that's corrected with the liver. So the liver has a lot to do with it. You know, with, with aging of the skin, for example, you might see liver spots, uh, those brown spots. Yeah. Why? Why the liver? <laughs> yeah. So the third layer, we get to another epigenetic component, and this time for the brain stem. Brain stem is deep in the brain, old part of the brain governs a lot of of the the body's unconscious, subconscious balancing functions, physiological functions, uh, and it again in this case it balanced the stress identified with the information medicine called BSH, brainstem hologram, infraceutical, that was also the remedy. It was an identity between the stress and, and the remedy is this information of healthy brain function in that deep brain brainstem area. Uh, with these drops, they're gonna, they're in a base of, uh, wow. of just a little bit of mineral water. So it has a little salty taste, but you're gonna put it in a little bit of water, like half a juice glass. You're gonna stir it into the water so the information goes into the whole bulk of the water and then drink it. And it's ideal to take them individually, but uh, the company keeps researching and they have found out it's okay, it'll work to mix them together. If you're, if you have, you know, especially busy morning or something, this is usually once a day in the morning, you put a, a drop in half a juice glass of water, stir it, nothing metallic because it does have an electrical charge that would be discharged with a metal utensil like a spoon. So you can use a chopstick or that's, we like wood or bamboo better than plastic anyway. <laughs> okay, so, um, and if you have time, it's great to spend two to five minutes after taking each one, just in a meditative state, feeling your body, sensing your body, visualizing the healing in the areas that you're looking to heal in the brain or in the nerves, nerve cells. Uh, and see if you can feel any movement, any energetic movement, kind of like after having an acupuncture treatment or during an acupuncture treatment, there's something going on, the chi is moving. And, and of course, we know the half of the healing power is that uh, activation of the, the mind, the spirit body. It's got powers that the chemistry doesn't have, and the two together are, are the most powerful. So we like, we like placebo effects. We're not opposed to placebo effects. To, to, to maximize healing, you can't, you can't do away with the placebo effect. You've lost half of the healing power. You got to use your mind and spirit aligned with the physical chemistry, the physics, the energy, all works together. Okay, so the fourth layer, we get to the eye area. Okay. Okay. And uh, it, the eye area balanced with a combination of OcuFlow daytime and OcuFlow bedtime. So this is a capsule formula uh, inspired by our, our folks who, who need uh, improvement in the flow of fluids in the eye with especially glaucoma. Uh, the fact that your, your pressures have been really on the low side, below average, to me is, is a great sign uh, that you know give, gives me hope. I can't tell you what to do on the medical side. That is, you know, they put me in a box. <laughs> it's not my not my role. I can say if it were me, I would be looking at the possibility of. Hmm, I wonder what my pressures would be if I be might be able to wean off of those medications that are having these negative side effects that are not insignificant. About half of yeah. people with glaucoma say that the side effects that they experience are worse than what they experience. From the, you know, everything that's happening with the disease from their perspective. So like the, the irritation, the feeling like there's a hair in there, the dry eye kind of sensation, grittiness is a huge problem. Uh, it can be redness and, and, you know, other things that are a sign. It's, it's not improving the health of the eye. Yes, it can slow yeah. down the-, the it, it, I feel like it's pulling the eye. It, 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 the, 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 
the yep. surface of the eye is like getting wrinkly. Like it feels like it's losing its integrity. Just the yep. surface of the eye. Yeah. I don't know. It could that could be because of the problem itself, but it. Could, it I don't think so. Because the drop. I think it's the drops. I think it makes sense with the side effects. Um, yeah. Tr start practicing with feeling the pressure in the eye, alternating pressure between the index finger and 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 middle okay. finger. Uh, see if it feels the same pressure in both eyes as I'm feeling now. I can feel some give in each eye, and that's good because I have a history of glaucoma. I can feel that that's in the normal range. It's not where it was when I was first diagnosed of upper twenties, and that's. That's a good thing. Uh, so yeah, my hope would be that if nothing else, the OcuFlow daytime and bedtime are going to be working in that same direction, but with herbs and nutrients that are actually improving the health of the eye. So it's going to help counteract the negative effects of the drops and help move you in a direction where if it's possible to wean off of them, you know, with with the medical support to know that what the pressures are doing and following the visual fields to know that those are good, stay at least stable, uh, then good, you're going in a good direction. We have clients, we have, we have several clients who have long-term glaucoma and major loss of vision. And in a period of several months to a year, they're showing recovery of half of the vision in some cases, a little more, a little less than half of the vision that they lost over like a 10, 12 year period. So it, you know, the old, the old idea that the loss of peripheral vision is irreversible. It's not the case. It's been falsified. <laughs> it doesn't mean it can always be reversed. We don't know from the field how much of that loss is cells that are not functioning visually because they had their energy is too low. Their health is too low. Their epigenetics is not right. They're not getting enough circulation, nutrition, but the cell is still alive. If the cell is still alive. It can recover. It can rejuvenate. And that's the phase, the terrain you're in is rejuvenation terrain. Turning around the rapid aging is called reju rejuvenation, rapid youthing, <laughs> getting the function yeah. back. So you can take that dysfunctional, non-functional visual cell and restore the visual function. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we want to visualize that, you know, hope for that pray for that see that in your mind's eye like have some some anticipation oh i'm doing my peripheral vision test i wonder if it's at least stable if it's stable great well then your lifestyle is sustained and if it can improve wow now you're really doing great um yeah. the fifth layer is the retina so we're getting into specifically the retina of the eye and it balanced with uh, another combination that's called NeuroProtect. This was the first formula I put together inspired by glaucoma, and it applies to other neurodegenerative conditions, Alzheimer's and ALS and whatnot, because uh, the same toxins are active in the cells in those different degenerative conditions, just in a different location in the brain. <coughs> NeuroProtect is, is less focused on the pressure and more focused on keeping the cells alive and restoring their function. So there's there's some some overlap in the ingredients, but just the focus is a little different on those two. And then the final layer is is just uh, help with uh, viral activity, uh, really symptomatic support. It's going to be super helpful, we believe, based on what we see with everybody else. Uh, one is a capsule called Virex, so antiviral herbal combination. And then Melissa essential oil, which is amazing topically. So if you know if you have uh, like a sore, a sore uh, uh, breaking out on the lip or something like that, you want to uh, yeah. go ahead and you know take a, an extra of the Virex, or you know if you get to a point where there's just no activity, you can just leave that on the shelf. And if you have any prodromal symptoms, you can uh, go ahead and, and take that and again the Melissa oil can really make things clear up so much faster. Sometimes if you get it soon enough, it even, oh, it, it, I was feeling it and it never even showed up. I'm wondering, <coughs> so you use the essential oil direct, directly. I just put it on straight. Yep, yep. You can, you can, you can blend it into other, you know, topical uh, creams or oils or whatever as well, but even straight 
just a little bit okay. straight on on the area is great. <laughs> Are you familiar with Petty Surge? No, I'm not. I will look it up. It's the, the, on <clears throat> Kauai, the, the, it's the big rage. We're all uh, growing Petty Surge and using the sap. It's a small, like, forest weed. And it's a small kind of fragile plant. P-E-T-T-Y, Surge, S-T-U-R-G-E. Yeah, I see. You put off a leaf. You cut off a leaf, and their tiny little drop of sap comes out, and you put it on your skin cancer spot, and it it uh, bubbles up like a really bad poison ivy, and then it eventually yeah. creates a crust and yeah. peels off, and got nice healthy skin underneath. So I I have used that, you know, the chemotherapy Epidex in the past on, and and it's like I can't handle. I can't handle that kind of nuclear nuking my skin, but I'm fi I find that Petty Spurge addresses and it moves under your it moves to like if you put it in a spot and you have, it goes to it goes to the damaged skin and kind of leaves skin alone that doesn't have cancer. right right yeah yeah uh, we haven't worked with that particular herb but uh, I see it's called cancer weed and <laughs> it's in the euphorbia species uh, euphorbia family. Um, we we do work with with es other escharotics where it's you know uh, there's the con traditional black salve there's another one that's made from eggplant that we we've been using um, and they're all fairly similar in that they don't they don't kill the the healthy tissue but they will yeah. the unhealthy tissue is going to die and and form an esker like a, a scab fall out you'll have a little bit of an ulcer and that that heals in very very effective very helpful so yes. Yeah. Um, Wonderful that you have it growing right there. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so so I love that. I love this essential oil uh, topical thing. That's that's going to be helpful for me for my weird outbreak type yep. of thing. Yep. Yep. But I guess I'll have less of those because I'm working on the systemic. Yep, it's going to work on it from both inside and outside. You know, the a virus is, you know, there, we don't even so much think of them as viruses in the conventional sense of it's this this thing that's attacking you, trying to, you know, trying to kill us. Uh, a virus isn't a living thing. It's just a toxic DNA or RNA, and it cannot even get near a healthy cell. So only when the cells, the tissue energy is already low, it has no shield of living water that would repel the virus completely. So getting the cellular energy back up helps with the function, helps with the immunity. Uh, yeah, we've, we've had people who, you know, like one, one elderly client in New York, she uh, had uh, just chronic viral outbreak for like the last 60, 70 years and uh, hasn't happened again, just gone. So it's, it's, it's not always killing the pathogen. <laughs> it's restoring our health is equally or more important. And it depends on, on all the, all the circumstances involved, you know, it's, yep. But there's lots of hope. That's amazing. I, I'm really surprised how much hope you're offering me today. I, I, I'm shocked. How much hope you're offering me today. Thank you so much. Nice. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I I personally would have been, uh, I was supposed to be dead in my 30s. Uh, I found out that, well, once after I found out when I was studying to be an eye doctor that I had glaucoma, that I'd be, if I did the, new, the conventional route of drugs and surgery, because they do their damage, they build up in the system and they only work for so long, they like run out of medicine in the drops. Yeah, well, no, it's the body is being only suppressed for so long, and it's so full of that toxin that more toxins not going to suppress it more, and it still has the original problem <laughs> and the new problem on top. So anyway, along the way of researching, like, what is it? Why is my body producing this? You know, I don't believe this is like, you know, something that's that's you know just it's just a thing. You have it. You must. You always have it. <laughs> Get used to it. Yeah. You know, the medical approach. Yeah. And fear it yeah. <laughs> and do as I say. <laughs> like I, yeah. 
I found that actually a major underlying cause for me was mercury toxicity, mercury poisoning from a lot of dental fillings. And it took me a while to replace them all a little at a time, you know, trying to flush out the mercury because I was not strong enough to excrete it. It was just building up in my brain, in my organs. It took me about, about 25, 30 years to start even getting it out of my brain because you'll get it out of one area and then another. The thyroid keeps the highest, gets the highest levels. Uh, the lens of the eye and the lens of the pineal store it the longest because it's the densest tissue. So it's, it's a sequence of cleansing this place and that place. When I started pulling it out of my brain, I went through a series of grand mal seizures. That was, that was interesting. <laughs> At the time, I, I thought I had early Alzheimer's or something. So I was doing some, some uh, oral chelation to, to clean out my brain, sent me into the series of, of grand mal's and, and eventually went back and completed the, the chelation. <laughs> brain is fine. So I went from not reading and writing anymore to uh, publishing 12 books in one year and, you know, just, okay, second wind. <laughs> Let's get some of this stuff out there while I can. So it's, there. to me, we don't know what we can't heal. How do we know? We got to try. I've, I had a lady in her upper 80s heal a mitral valve prolapse that had been there for 30 years her here on the island, her her uh, cardiologist was Harvard trained, and he told her right to her face, you know, if I hadn't been the doctor who diagnosed you 30 years ago, I, I would tell you right now, absolutely no question, you were misdiagnosed. Whoever that was, they didn't do it right. But it was me, I can't say that, because this doesn't, in the textbooks, this doesn't heal itself. Well, you know what, the body is designed to heal itself. It's always healing itself. Look how we heal when we're young compared to as we get older, things slow down. There's less yeah. circulation, there's less metabolism, there's you know less to work with, but it's still healing the best it can, but the healing's not going as fast as the damage. So we age, yeah. we call it aging. Yeah, okay, we're supposed to mature and age, That's but we shouldn't be losing our marbles, losing our function, losing our vision. Uh, we should be, you know, the, the, the wise elders that have the experience that can, you know, help the younger ones bypass some of the mistakes and pitfalls that we found. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, at least we can give, give, put out, put out the water and it's up to them to drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. videos how much vitality I'm struck by how much vitality you have you, you seem very vital I feel good <laughs> I'm not done yet <laughs> yeah that's I'm I just get more fascinated by what I learned so but as I was trained trained at Dartmouth in the sciences you know top student at my school for optometry um a couple classes behind Mark and uh the science, a lot of the science is wrong at the foundation. It makes assumptions that they don't even talk about that are just, you know, a, a weak foundation. And when you build on that weak foundation, you, you can't build very high. Uh, just take an example, circulation. When you look in medical texts, they have great mathematics. Like mathematics is beautiful, but when it starts with the wrong, with the wrong assumption, well, it's it's a simplification of the reality, but so here's what happens: they they to get nice equations for for the for the circulation, they say we're going to assume that the blood vessels are rigid pipes. Well, that describes somebody who's not healthy. They may not be, they may not have a disease, but they're susceptible to disease. They are on the edge. They are not well. They're not, maybe not sick. They maybe they are sick, but they're not well. And uh, because half of the circulation comes from the flexibility of, of the blood vessels. And that responds, yeah. that responds to the EKG, the electrical signal of the heart that travels faster than the blood. It gets there, it opens up the gates so the blood can get in. If you have an organ that's not doing well, it's gonna be down by at least 50% less than its optimum circulation. And you know, does it, in a disease state even less. So just, you know, every little thing 
you know, so I, I, I love, I love, you know, looking at from the quantum level to the cosmic level, if we can understand the nature of what this is that we are made out of, and, and, you know, look at who we are and why we're here, you know, we're spiritual beings, we have consciousness, the biologists, 90% of them believe that we're philosophical zombies, I guess, <laughs> it's not their fault. They had no choice in that because they're philosophical zombies. They're just purely reacting to, you know, cause and effect at, you know, a, a mechanical, electrical, chemical level. Okay. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> no, bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit on all of it. You have, all it takes is one case of, you know, a woman having a heart attack and her body is dead. Her heart is not pumping. Her brain is flatlined. There's no biological activity there on electrical level. And she's up in the corner of the room seeing that body, not, not even quite figuring out that it's her body, because who are we? Who Am I the body? Not If I'm in the body, uh, sure, I identify with this body. I'm here. Yeah. But if I'm looking at it from over there, that's clearly somebody's body. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, she comes, they, they bring her back and... <clears throat> after the whole thing is over, she's asking for her glasses. It's like, your glasses, I don't know, there's no glasses here by your bed, uh, you know, must have gotten lost in, in the, you know, emergency room, whatever. And she says, well, the, the nurse with the blonde hair put them on the lower shelf of the, of that, uh, you know, the rolling table there by, by the cart I, I was on, and they go and find them there. <laughs> there's been, we know that what has intelligence and sensation and experience is the spirit. If 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 we remove the spirit, like in you know, a Western medical science, you know, well, the spirit, nah, nah, nah. The church can talk about that, but we're not talking about that in our church. So the body without the spirit, we call that death when the two are or out of body, a near-death experience, right? And I've been there a few times. We, we, unless we account for the spirit, the consciousness, the conscious sentient immortal body present in the body, we're gonna miss half of the potential to restore the material body. And what's the purpose of healing the physical body? Well, I suppose it's, you know, take that aspirin so the headache goes away so you can get back to work, damn it, like crack the whip. No, you know, if we're just looking at commerce, sure, that's the answer. If, if we're looking at, the big picture of who we are and why we're here, healing is a spiritual growth process. We're developing the capacity of persistence, the capacity of, uh, of compassion for others who are going through something similar, uh, of, uh, you know, the, all, all of the virtues. <laughs> it's like what it takes to heal is to become a better person versus running away from our challenges Give me the drug, suppress it. I don't want to know. Just, just get this pain away. We, we had a, a, a man who uh, was brought to us by his daughter in Kona, other side of the island. He was from Boston. Rough, rough background. Just, you know, <laughs> rough and tough Bostonian guy who, you know, drinking and smoking heavy his whole life. He was dying of liver cancer. They said, you have three months to live. He's on morphine. He's on under a lot of pain, even despite the morphine when he gets here on the plane. But, but tell you what, he left the alcohol and the tobacco in Boston and never looked back. He went to stay with his daughter and his son-in-law and they were doing raw juicing and they, they were, you know, they, they had a mission, you know, that they were aware of that, hey, this is healing stuff. So they, they put him on the diet that was, you know, like a Gerson program. And, and then we tested him and, and fed him the supplements, the remedies to, to on top of that to create coherence in his, in his body field. And in the three months that he was supposed, he was supposed to be dead in three months. In the three months that he was supposed to be dead, he was off morphine and pain-free. Now, he was still dying. He was still dying of metastatic cancer. He had cancer everywhere. It was, you know, beyond the point of, of healing the physical body. I mean, not that it had to be, you know, we never know, because you can have metastatic cancer that heals completely in three days with a high fever, and it's called spontaneous remission. I've got a book this thick, 3,000 cases of it, always in phase two terrain with a bacterial activity that we would call an infection that you could kill with an antibiotic, but you'd probably kill the the healing process 
Yeah. Anyway, in six months, he finally, he did pass away. But you know what? He, he was not on morphine. He was not in pain. The morning that he was to pass, he knew it. He, he was sentient. He was present. His spirit was present in the body. He knew it was the day he asked the kids to, you know, the adult kids <coughs> to stay home from work that day. He passed at noon, say, being able to say goodbye. Like, how can I say, how can I, how can I imagine what's the value to the spirit in passing from this life to the one that's next? To be sentient and you know present and you know not not contracted in pain and and with your family to me that's like wow that's like an ultimate success of healing that didn't heal the physical body wow. yeah so i i i just love you know seeing how this all works and then trying to figure it out like ah uh, i think i I went to help him come back to life, and then my father was dying, so I had my brother at my father's house, and I'm nursing both of them, and I just spent, and during that time was the time I suddenly went blind. It wasn't really a suddenness. I suddenly noticed, okay, yeah. I'm blind. I would really need to go see somebody about this. Um, yeah, and that's the left eye? <laughs> my father died. My brother came back to life. Okay. What's yeah. happening with your mother? Anything with your mother? My mother died a long time ago. A long time ago. Okay. Because sometimes <laughs> with the we yeah. there there can be a relationship between the left eye and the mother, and more often the left eye and the mother, and the right eye and the father. So it's interesting. It didn't really correspond in this. I was because I didn't get to be with my mother. I was close to my mother, not my father. And I didn't get to even see her when she died painfully and alone. But I was my father was pampered and I took care of him. Yeah. And his and and, and I definitely felt I, I went through a huge, huge uh transformative forgiveness process with my father that I would have never ever gotten to if I hadn't been in a caregiving yeah. long-term yeah. caregiving situation with him so it ended up being a spiritual awakening for me even though probably for him it didn't make any difference at all but the mm -hmm. fact that you're talking about death you know i feel like since i've come back to Kauai, i feel like really it's about my death now or my relationship with my own death I, i've been you know kind of boldly and bravely helping other people with their death and now i'm kind of in this space where it's like i'm not really who i was before and I don't really know who I am now. And I feel like I'm looking at my own fear of my own death. And uh, and I feel like that's really what's going on with me right now. So I really yeah. appreciate that you ended up talking about that. Yeah, it's, I mean, such a powerful life has, uh, you know, has a beginning that's very powerful. We all come from, you know, our mother's womb and we were born and that's a huge traumatic event. and. And also, yeah. but also a transition from from one environment where we can only see as far as we can touch, and there's only one color. It's red, filtered through the blood, uh, into this world. It's like a whole rainbow of colors, and we can see the stars. and And so, I think the next birth, the death, the separation from this body, is going to be equally, uh, you know, profound. An increase in, in dimensionality. I have a friend who who died clinically several times and he he says oh just the the th the biggest thing that he like he can't describe hardly any of it but he says the biggest thing is color is not like here that it's the only word he can use is blue but it's that doesn't describe it that there's just you know, when when we see directly with the spirit body uh we see in 360 degrees above and below and all the way around we're not looking through the pupils of a material biological eye in the body bio body suit uh yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it's marvelous to con contemplate yeah and and you know, know our, our culture is so, is so death so such a culture of death and 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 we so avoid the topic i mean it's it's a transformation and it's uh to to be open to 
discovery of what that transformation really is, is really to be open to life, I believe. I believe that, exactly. You know, people who, people come up with a diagnosis of cancer, they, the ones who are cancer survivors, who've like healed the, the cancer and they're still always healing it because it's, it's not the tumor, it's a state of the whole body. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> to a person, they'll say, Oh, the, the best thing that ever happened to me when it was when I found out I had cancer, because then I really started to live, right? Because when you when you start to look at your own mortality, you say, well, well every day matters. What am I going to do with this gift of life? Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Thank you so much. I, I, I think it would be yeah. useful. I think it would be really, really useful for you to uh, to look at. Uh, your relationship with your mother and how you didn't really get to to see her uh, in in that uh, time of passage. Uh, I think there's something there in in bringing back bringing your left eye vision, the mother's maternal eye vision, to the present. Uh, you know, here now by completing that, like seeing in the mind's eye, visualizing her because. Her spirit is still very much alive and present universally. So you can communicate with her. You can talk to her. You can, uh, you know, uh, hold that connection as a, a living connection, really from the heart. Uh, there's very, very interesting studies that have come out that the heart is is a transcendent communication system. You know, we can see the stars, but we can sense the future from the heart. Like literally, they, they do slides. They show slides, and if it's a slide of something that's would af would affect the the nervous system, like a shock, uh, trauma, something dangerous, a snake, uh, fire, the heart will respond before the computer runs a random number generator to determine which slide is going to show. So it's getting a message from the future, which the spirit body, as I understand, as I model it. It's it's a single quantum. It it works like a single atom is a quantum. It's a quantum device at a macroscopic human scale. And in in the quantum world, forward and reverse time, or there's no distinction. The spirit can can communicate with the past. We can heal the past. We can certainly heal our our the anchors that are dragging uh, we're dragging from the past. We can release those, uh, and we can connect with the future. Uh, and sometimes it can be, well, <laughs> I, I've had experiences where it's what saved my life was a message from the immediate future that saved me from going down a thousand foot cliff when I was in a, an altered state, crossing the, the Great Divide and the Rocky Mountains without a trail. That's a, another story. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll put it up on uh, on YouTube. Uh, I can set it to private where nobody can else can see it. Or if you're if you're OK with it being public, we can set it where other people can see it as well. That's entirely up to you. Yeah, let's make it public. It's beautiful. I'd love to share it with anybody that Great. could benefit. Yeah. 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 So I would just just recently started recording some of the testing process. Another time we can do that. And so you can see, oh, how, how does he find these things out? Well, I feel it. My body can feel it through the Omura O-ring muscle test, fine motor of the muscles. The only patented muscle test in the world, Dr. Omura has healed so many people in New York, Japanese medical doctor. Uh, it's uh, after doing seven years of electronic measurements on the patient's body, measuring with like a lie detector test, Oh, oh, this stressed, not stressed. I could feel it faster without all the electricity running through the circuit. It's like, just think of the person, feel it, and and see if there's a response to this vial of healthy liver tissue or you know whatever the hundreds and hundreds of different energy samples. It's like the linguistics, you know, the the vocabulary the body speaks with. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this, for being available to meet with 
people. Yeah, you bet. And to share this with us, I, I'm so, so thrilled. It's just, oh. It's, it's my mission. <laughs> You know, I I know I know what it's done for me. Again, I wouldn't be alive, and and if even if I hadn't died, had something that was going to kill me, I would have been blind by age fifty. So every day is a gift. So um, Ray Ray is on another line with with her mother in Canada at this time. So uh, I'll just I'll I'll end the uh, end the recording, and then we can still talk. Okay. okay.